here I am to bow down and here I am to say that you're my God you roll you roll together and you roll together with all, all together wow. wonderful to oh here I am here I am to worship and here I am to bow oh yes here I am to see
that your confession this morning let's just give him a mighty hand of praise amen welcome his presence in our midst this morning amen how many say i'm here to worship amen i believe that's the desires of our hearts as we come into his presence amen spending the week in our different places in the battlefield and some might be coming spiritually limping but i believe as you are here to worship him he's here to heal you he's here to give you what you have need of this morning do you believe it this morning amen bless his wonderful name would like to welcome you all in the precious name of the lord jesus christ this morning all those that are visiting us and uh, with us this morning for the service trust the lord will give you a wonderful time in his presence as you sit at his feet and uh, may his blessings be upon you and may he give you the portion that you have need of this morning amen feel welcome this is the house of the lord amen let's just sing this little chorus i love him better every day as the deacons take up the offering amen Beam. 
appreciate the Lord for that. Honor us, Brother Lucas, to just come and meet the tithes and the offerings in the hands of the Lord this morning. Pray. Father, we bow before this morning, dear Savior. We're indeed so grateful, dear Father, to be in your presence, O God. Because you promised, a dear Savior, and said, wheresoever two and three are gathered in your name, there you'll be in their midst, heavenly Father. Amen. We come unto thee to worship you. We come unto thee to praise you, heavenly Father. For you deserve, O God, all of our worship. You deserve all of our praise, heavenly Father. Lord, we've brought, heavenly Father, the tithes and offerings. Lord Jesus, within your storehouse, Lord Jesus, as part of our worship unto thee, Heavenly Father. And you said, O oh God, bring the tithes and the offerings into the storehouse. Try me and see, O oh God. You promised, dear Savior, that you'd open up the windows of heaven, O oh God, and pour down your blessings, dear Savior, until there would be no room, Heavenly Father. O oh God, you're a God that keeps your promises, Heavenly Father. Bless those that could give, Heavenly Father. Bless those that couldn't give, a dear Father. We commit everything into your hands and may it be for the extension of your kingdom, Heavenly Father. We commit the rest of the service, O oh God, into your mighty hands. These things we humbly ask, Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with much of thanksgiving, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many are still happy? Amen. Let's just sing this little chorus. Uh, beloved, let us love one another. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another. Oh, yes. Oh, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. He that loveth not. No, it not go for God is love. Hey, yes, be love. Let us love one another. Oh, yeah, and be love. Let us love one another. Oh, yes, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And yes, we love it, let us love one another. Oh yes, we love it, let us love one another. Oh yes, and for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And yes, beloved, let us love one another. Very simple chorus. We'll get used to it and as we go along the way. Amen. Let's just stand on our feet. Amen. Let's sing this song. There is a land of milk and honey. Amen. There is a land of milk and honey. And there is a land where we won't need money. And 
stone along the trail that's winding always upward amen
God bless you, church. Amen. So good to be back in the house of God this morning again. Amen. Knowing where God has taken us from, deep mighty clay. Amen. I've got uh, Thanksgiving here yeah, from Brother Prince. Says, God bless you, saints. Thank you, saints, for your prayers. My mom is doing much better. Amen. And uh, all those that have got a request can show by raising forth your hand as we commit all this in the hands of the Almighty God. Precious Heavenly Father, it's such a joy this morning once again to gather around your word, knowing that we are gathered around the great God of heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Lord. For there is nothing that was created that was not created by you. We are coming here as your children, Father, that you have foreordained. For Lord, we know this day is a predestinated day. It's not by coincidence, Father. For you know all things from the beginning to the end, Lord. That's why you are called the Almighty God. For without us you could not be called the Creator. But Lord, you made us in your image. And we are here, Father God, to give you all the honor and all the glory. We're saying thank you, Almighty God, for healing our mom, our, the, the mom of our brother, Lord. We know it's God in simplicity. A simple prayer can avail much if it's done with faith, Lord God Almighty. That's why, Father God, we are raising up also our hands. Each and every one has got a raised request, Father God, before you, saying, Almighty God, may you undertake for each and every one of them, Lord, because we know we are a faithful God. For we judge you faithful, him that has promised it, Lord. Even Abraham, Lord God, he was told to move out of his country from his brethren, Lord God, to go to a country which he knew not, Lord. But he trusted you and he judged you faithful who had promised him the city and the land where he dwelt as a stranger, but he was in the promised land. Almighty oh, God, what a wonderful thing. For he was not looking for something that can be seen by hand, but you are looking for a city whose builder and maker was the Almighty God. He could not look at the natural things. Help us, Lord God, in this day that we are living in, that we do not look at the natural things, the things where we dwell, the jobs that we have, or the clothes that we put on, Lord. But you are looking for, Lord God, something deeper than that, a closer and a closer walk with you, Almighty God. Help us this morning to be focused upon you, nothing to distract us, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we are looking up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Help us this morning, Lord, and take for each and every one of us. There may be somebody who is new in this place, Lord. May you find a way of touching him, Lord, with your word, that, Lord, at the end of this service, you will not go out in the same way he came in, Lord. Help us, Father God, as we go on with the singing of the songs of Zion. May you, Father God, anoint the singing, Lord. May you also come and anoint the preaching of the word. Lord, we are under expectation this morning. We are really looking forward to this service that you are going to say something special to us this morning. Have your own way, Lord, as we want, just want to surrender this whole service into your precious hands for your honor and for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Praise the wonderful name. Are you still happy to be in his presence? Amen. You may take your seats. Can have Brother Peter Mtao to come and give us a special item here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We just want to praise the Lord this morning. And this morning I just want to encourage my Zimbabwean brothers with a Shona song. Amen. I haven't done it before, but I believe it's going to be a blessing. Amen. If you do not understand the song, it's all about the worker of the Lord. Yeah, it says... A worker of the Lord wants or likes to be instructed of the Lord, to walk in the ways of the Lord. Amen. That's what the song is all about. It says many other things, but we do not have a, an interpreter to do that. <laughs> Amen. 
Item, amen. The whole song, the, the, the meaning of the song is just avail, one availing themselves to God, saying, I'm here, my Lord. If you want me to be a worker for you, my mind direct it, my deeds, let them be you doing it in me. So that's the, that's the whole song about it. Amen. May the Lord bless 
the brother and the sister. Let's just give them another hand of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we get ready to hear the word, amen. Let's just sing this uh, little chorus into the chamber, amen. This morning to enter into that Shekinah glory that our lives can be changed and that we can become closer unto our living God and I want to greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ we are thankful that God made another way for us to gather in this fashion to come together to show our Lord we love him we truly appreciate him this morning we've got so many blessings to be counted Many, many wonderful things the Lord has done for us that we can just say we really appreciate the Lord this morning and we appreciate the privilege that He says, Come and dine. The Master call of come and dine because He's got a table set for every one of us. Imagine if you would come to the table this morning and there was no food, but God can never fail us. Remember, it's not up to a man, it's not even up to you. Amen. The Lord said He will supply our very needs. And if one of my children asks me for bread, I will never give him a stone. So we come together this morning with an absolute assurity that Jesus Christ can do all things, that he's in control of every situation, and that he can bless us abundantly. Amen. We've got a visitor in our midst this morning uh, from Brother Tanash. It's my niece, Panash, 
from Zimbabwe. Where is our visitor this morning? If you could just see a hand. Amen. God bless you, sister. Welcome. We appreciate the Lord that we can have this wonderful time of fellowship again this morning. And um, we thank the Lord that he could make a way for us all to come. And um, God bless you, brother. It's it Brother Claude. Amen. Good to have you here in the house of the Lord. We are thankful to have our brother here from East London. Amen. <clears throat> we appreciate the Lord for that. And we have our brother Sammy here from Port Elizabeth again this morning. We are thankful that our brother could come and visit us and to come and preach the word of the living God. We pray that the Lord will use our brother in a mighty way. His wife, our sister Anita and Sister Rebecca, his daughter and brother Caleb, his son is also here at the back there. We welcome them in the house of the Lord. Amen. So we are thankful this morning. And uh, obviously I am relaxed to sit down and uh, just receive my portion this morning. So I want to pray that the Lord will use our brother. You know the Lord knows what we need. The Lord knows what I need. And I'm depending upon him as I lift my cup this morning to say, Lord, here's my cup. I lift it up. I have a need this morning. May you fill my, my cup this morning. Amen. Let's sing that song as we invite our brother to the pulpit. Here's my cup. I lift it up. Remember, you can only get what you expect. And I'm expecting a blessing from the Lord. I'm expecting the Lord to speak to my heart. And we truly believe that our God is more than able. Amen. Let's sing it to the glory of God. Amen. Oh, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, up Lord. And come and
Let it be for your glory. Let it be for your edification, Lord. We are not here, Lord, to uplift a man. We are not, Lord, to uplift anybody, Lord, in the flesh, but to give you words of praise, glory, and honor. And for whatever is going to be said and done this morning, our Lord, I pray that you would bless me as your chosen vessel this morning. And Lord Jesus, bless your children, Lord, who have come, Lord, under expectation. For we ask these mercies, Master, in that wonderful and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's children shall say, Amen. God bless you. A very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you all. It's good to be found back with our precious Miss Annas and the church out here. We pray that God will bless you. And um, I don't have anything new. In fact, my precious brother, when he prayed this morning, he almost prayed my sermon away. <laughs> So we just pray that God is going to bless us this morning. As I say, we don't have anything new, but we're just here to echo what Malachi 4, 5, and 6 has said. Amen. And brother, sister, friend, I, I, I am a, I'm a believer that God has sent us a prophet, Ms. Anti. Amen. A prophet that's come and has brought the word to us. Amen. It's not my duty to take the prophet back to the word, but it's my duty to listen to the voice that God has sent. Amen. I stress a voice that God has sent. And brother, sister, friend, if you do that, you don't have problems. So before I start preaching this morning, what I would love to say is that if you hear anything that you is contrary to what our precious pastor is teaching you, you believe exactly what he teaches you because he's your shepherd. Okay, and you've got to do that. And I am here just a voice trying to support him as we go out in this field. So pray by the grace of God that God is going to bless us this morning. Put away all blinkers. Be relaxed. Don't be narrow-minded and say, whoa, we've got a different minister. We've got to be careful what he's saying. I am just here to echo. Please, I am just here to echo Malachi 4, 5, and 6, Amen. Revelation 10, 7. And I believe by the grace of God that God is going to bless us this morning. Are you under expectation? Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. It's good. Uh, I bring warm greetings from the believers out in, uh, in Port Elizabeth. In fact, they, uh, they love your pastor and his dear wife, and we pray that God will bless you all as you'll cherish this couple that you'll have that's leading you all through. Amen. You've got to respect your pastor. You've got to accept him as your shepherd Amen. because you are the sheep. Amen. And if you're not the sheep, trust me, that's not your shepherd. So we pray that God will bless you all this morning. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Do you really love the Lord? Amen. Okay, what we're going to do this morning, we're going to go into... Um, uh, a thought this morning, very, very simple, very well spoken about. I think every message believer knows about it. But I'm just calling my sermon this morning, Eliezer, tell me more. And I'm taking a thought, you can't cross the bloodline. My thought is, you can't cross the bloodline. Amen. There we are out there. So could you rise to our feet open to Genesis 24, reading verse 2 to 4. Genesis 24, reading verse 2 to 4. What am I doing right here, brother? Or what am I doing wrong? Okay, thank you, my brother. God bless you. Genesis Chapter 24, reading verse 2 to 4. Genesis chapter 4, reading verse 2 to 4. Having found it, God's word read as thus. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hands under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites amongst whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. The next scripture reading this morning is Leviticus 19, uh, 17, reading verse 11. Leviticus 17, reading verse 11. It 
For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. So, brother, sister, friend, when you see the scripture verses up there, you see a lot of colors and things like that. Just look at his, his, try, his words that I'm trying to stress on this morning. So, by the grace of God, I pray that you'll find it in keeping with what you have been taught and what you understand of this glorious message. As I said, my thought this morning is you can't cross the bloodline. So, when, you look at, when we look at this verse here, Leviticus 17, verse 11, for... The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. What does the word atonement mean? It's reconciliation between God and man through the blood. Reconciliation between God and man through the blood and in Old Testament time, it was through the blood of animals. But in our days, it is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please keep that in your thought this morning as we focus on you can't cross the bloodline. So, brother, sister, friend, we all know as our precious brother prayed this morning about Abraham. And uh, please forgive me. I might say Abraham, I might say Abraham, but you know where Abraham is and you know where Abraham comes in. But because we use the word Abraham so much, so if I use the word Abraham instead of the word Abraham, I want you to understand because of the familiarity of the word Abraham. That is why we said that. Nevertheless, Abraham, brother, sister, friend, we know now God had called Abraham in uh, of the Chaldees. So while he was out there, brother, sister, friend, for us to know the calling that came up to Abraham, Abraham, the, one, the calling that came to him, we need to know what transpired before his time. Jewish teaching is that the parents will talk to the children and pass the teaching to generations. That is it. So, brother, sister, friend, what had happened is that now God in Genesis chapter 6 saw that the world has got to a condition where the sons of God so the daughters of men were fair and they took unto them wives. Brother, sister, friend, and because of this relationship, one of the attributes or the fruits of this relationship was that there were giants in the land. Where did they come from? Brother Branham must tell us that this generation had reached a level, brother, sister, friend, that they were doing a whole lot of things. They got into the laboratory of God. They interfered with genes. They interfered with all kinds of things. So you think today's scientists are good? They've been done in those days, brothers and friends. And God Almighty could not accept what was being done. Man had got into his domain. In Genesis chapter 1, darkness was upon the face of the earth, brothers and friends. And God decided to separate the darkness, the light from the darkness. And he called the day the light, day and he called the darkness night. God did that then. So what happened in Genesis chapter 6? The, the world was in a state of mess, brothers and friends. Chaos reigned. And God had to come and put a destruction to start his creation all over again. So brothers and friends, when he had done that, he put a prophet on the scene. And this prophet came with a simple message, it's going to rain. For 120 years, Noah preached the same sermon. Play, review, cue, review, cue, review. It's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. For 120 years, parents that did not know how to grow the children up, parents that did not know how to rear the children in the ways of the Lord, the children who walked past the prophet of the day, Uncle Noah, it's going to rain. They got the message. They might have been teasing the prophet. Yeah. They might have been echoing what the mother and the father had been talking at home. Uh -huh. But brothers and friends, they had the message that has come their way. Right. It is going to rain. 
The very same thing happened in this end time day. God sent us a prophet and he came with a message, brothers and friends, to call out a bride. People will tease you. People will mock you. People will call you all kinds of things. But I need you to understand that Noah stood there for 120 years with the same message. And then God fulfilled the purpose of what he sent that prophet for. But over all of that, brothers and friends, when he crossed over after the flood, Noah was found drunk. And you know what happened, brothers and friends. So that was Noah. Immediately after Noah came people that thought they were good. People that thought they were better than the message that came in that day. People that thought they knew everything about what was happening around them. So Noah preaches for 120 years. Listen to what I've got to say. Itchy years, brother, sister, friend. And they came with a concept that if they build a tower, they will reach God. That's what happened just before Abraham came on the scene. And God could not accept that. He came down, he saw what happened, and he destroyed that temple, brothers and friends. He brought it down and he confounded the language and he dispersed man across the face of the earth. This is the thing that happened before Abraham was on the scene. Now, God speaks to Abraham as an unbeliever. In the hour of the Chaldees and gave him a commission and told him, Abraham, get thee out. Not Abraham, come out, or Abraham, go. Get thee out. Hard words. If you had to deal with a problem in the church and your deacon and your pastor use a word like that, you will say, but who is he? Who does he think he is? Get thee out. Out of thy country. Out of thy kindred. Out of thy father's house. Brother, sister, friend, hard words. Get thee out, Abraham. The same God that was dealing with the people before Abraham came on the scene was now dealing with Abraham directly. So let's look a, a quick run up to where I want to go. I hope I don't delay you this morning, but I want you to understand what is happening. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Abraham was a 75 years old when God spoke to him in the air of the Chaldees and told him, Get thee out of thy kindred, uh, thy country, and the father's house, and follow the voice that I have given you. 75. At that time when God called him and his wife, they had passed the time of childbearing. At the calling, brothers and gentlemen, 75 years old, they had passed the time of childbearing. So, brothers and gentlemen, when God gave him that commission and called him out of that beautiful place, he told him, I will make thee that God was going to prosper him. He left everything. He took his cattle and his things, and he went out. But Abraham never listened to the commission that God had given him. Called him and his wife out, but along with him went Lot. So, brother, sister, friend, Abraham in that condition, there's one thing you have to accept this morning. He acknowledged that voice. He knew the voice that spoke to him. And in doing so, he acknowledged that voice and said, Lord God. Please remember, Abraham said, Lord God. When you accept Jesus as your Savior, when you acknowledge him as Lord in your life, Amen. you bring yourselves under subjection to leadership. Amen. That's what happens. We are too good to accept Christ as our Savior. It's free. Amen. But when you accept him as Lord, brother, sister, friend, trust me. It's a king that has control over his domain. He sets the rules, he sets the laws, and he dictates the way he wants the terms. And subjects need to bring themselves under order. Amen. And I pray by the grace of God as believers this morning, as end time message believers this morning, that you accept Jesus as your Lord Amen. and Savior. Amen. And in doing that, God is going to bless you, brothers and friends. Now in this condition, in God calls him in Genesis 15 and talks to him. And now Abraham is now speaking back to God. 
and telling God, you know what? I am childless. I am childless. Abraham, not Abraham. I am childless. What will thou give me? Seeing that I have in my house a servant by the name of Eliezer of Damascus. Abraham is now talking to God. He never had a name change. He never had a body change. But he's speaking to God and talking to God and saying, I am childless. I've prospered. I've got all of these things around me. And I don't have an heir. So right now, the only person is this Eliezer of Damascus. Brother and sister, friend, in Jewish tradition, it was that a child that's born in the house becomes heir if something happens and the, the Lord of the house does not have children. But this Eliezer, brother and sister, friend, Scripture is very clear, is Eliezer of Damascus. I want you to remember, this is the first time and the last time this Eliezer is mentioned in the Bible. Eliezer with Abraham is mentioned only once in the Bible. So, brother, sister, friend, anyway, it goes out there and God comes and tells him, no, Abraham, in the same chapter, I am going to give you. This Eliezer of Damascus that you are talking about is not going to be here. I want you to understand that Eliezer of Damascus has now in charge of everything in Abraham's kingdom. Whatever he said went. Brother, sister, friend, in that condition, Eliezer knew that if my master dies, everything that he owns is mine. Genesis chapter 15, there's no Ishmael. Genesis chapter 15, there is no Isaac. So one may say, well, Eliezer was really true and faithful because he knew that he was going to inherit everything. One would say, well, Eliezer, his master might have told him, Eliezer, if I do die, everything belongs to you. That is why Eliezer could have been faithful. But brother, sister, friend, as we go along this morning, you will see that Eliezer had a character Amen. that was fitting with what the Almighty God wanted. Amen. So, brother, sister, friend, Eliezer, now we see in Genesis 15, he is identified by Abraham as the heir to the kingdom. We know that. So, let's see. According to Scripture, Eliezer was the steward of the house. And the meaning of the word steward, according to the dictionary, is one that manages or look after another's property, and that's exactly what Eli was, Eliezer was doing for Abraham. And then he also says, one who actively directs their first. So whatever had to happen in the domain of Abraham, it was being done by Eliezer. Yeah. Eliezer, brother, sister, friend. And my subject is Eliezer, tell me more. So we need to find out exactly what that is. He was now prosperous. He was now getting everything that happened down there, brothers and friends. And we know that Eliezer, according to what the prophet taught us, came for a commission. He came for a specific commission. Right now, in Genesis 15, he was just the servant in charge of the kingdom of his master. That's all it was in Genesis 15. So let the thing roll on, brothers and friends. By the way, the word Eliezer means God has helped. That's what the Hebrew meaning of the word Eliezer means, God has helped. So in Genesis chapter 17, brothers and friends, in verse 1, the covenant that God made with Abraham, and he says, walk thou perfect before me. Genesis 17. 17 in the Bible points to a prophet of God. A dispensation of time when there's a change, brothers and friends, and the only change that comes in a dispensation comes from a prophet. Nobody else. When a prophet comes on the scene, that's when a change in dispensation happens. It's a prophet that does that because a prophet comes with thus saith the Lord. Amen. So, brothers and friends, in verse 1, God is now making a covenant with Abraham. 
telling him, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. That is it. So, but Abraham is now 86 years old, brother, sister, friend, when he gets his baby from Hagar. He left at 75. At 86, Hagar produces a son. Somebody, according to Jewish teachings, that has the right to claim what is a father's if there's a death. Don't forget, there's an Eliezer around. So, brother, sister, friend, in Genesis chapter 17, verse 10 to 14, then now the covenant of the circumcision comes in when God told Abraham, gave him a clear commission for circumcision, excess flesh, get rid of the things of the flesh, and follow me, brother, sister, friend. That's what happened in Genesis chapter 17, reading verse 10 to 14. And this time, when this commission was done, Abraham was now 99 years old. We're coming to 100. We all know what happened in 100. Genesis chapter 17, verse 5, God appears to him and tells him, Abraham, you will no more be called Abraham, you will be called Abraham. Right? Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. Genesis chapter 17, verse 15, he tells him, now your wife is not going to be Sarah, she's going to be Sarah. Genesis chapter 6, 17, there is no sign of Isaac as yet. Brothers and sisters, in Genesis chapter 18, now we find out that Abraham is out there at the tent door, sitting out there and maybe relaxing, watching what was happening around him, and then he sees these three messengers coming. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. The prophet has made us aware by the opening of the word that when Abraham addressed them, he said, my Lord, speaking to one out of three. Amen. The Bible is not wrong. The Bible is 100% correct, brother. In this whole thing, Abraham offers a sacrifice. He gives them to eat. And then we find out something very strange happened in Genesis chapter 18. Verse 12, Melchizedek heard Sarah laugh behind him. In the verse before that, when God spoke to Abraham and told him that he was going to have a son, the scripture says that Abraham laughed so much that he rolled on the ground. That's how much he laughed. Try to think. What an embarrassing situation that would have been if I told you something and you laughed and rolled on the ground. How embarrassing it would have been for me. But that was God talking to his son. But then when it comes to Sarah, brother, sister, friend, God saw her laughing and he asked why. She lied. God could have struck her dead immediately, but he had a plan and a purpose for his son Abraham. He was going to get a promised son through. Sarah, brother, sister, friend, Amen. say what you want. Doesn't matter what Sarah did. God was going to accommodate her because of his promise that he made Amen. to his son Abraham. Amen. Genesis chapter 20. Now we can see signs of the body change that the prophet told us. Because now when they go over, King Abimelech sees this beautiful woman. Wow. She's about 90 years old. Abraham is 99. She's about 90 years old, and he wants to take her to wife. There's been a body change. Amen. There's been a body change, brother and friend. The king has a choice of the kingdom. He can get any woman to be his wife. Why would he choose somebody that's almost 99 years old? Because God Almighty came and he changed that body one of his days. You are going to be changed to that immortal body when you're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Genesis 21, verse 5. Now Abraham is now 100 years old, brother, sister, friend. And that's when baby Isaac comes along. Amen. God's promise that he kept to his servant. Amen. Through Isaac was going to come the descendants of Abraham. that God has promised him when he looked out into the skies. You cannot number the stars in the skies. You will never number your children. You and I are sons Amen. of Abraham. Amen. Brother, sister, friend, in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham was called to take that son 
that God has promised him. He will be a father of many nations. To take that son and sacrifice him at Mount Moriah. Abraham willfully did it, brother Stifler. Because that God that promised him a son that he was going to get at the age of 75, it went to 86, it went to 99. At 100 years old, he changed the body and he gave them that son. Amen. If God could do that, he will surely give him another son or he will raise that son up. Abraham had faith that God was in control, brothers Amen. and sisters. And then we find out, now we reach Genesis chapter 24. So, Eliezer, we only hear the name once in Genesis 15. We don't hear about it in Genesis 24. Please get that clear. We don't hear about it in Genesis 24. But we find out that Abraham said unto his elder servant, God took a prophet on the scene that told us the same servant that was there in Genesis 15 is the same servant that's here in Genesis 24. God took a prophet to do that, brother, sister, friend, because when you try to study, go into uh, commentaries, you're going to get a whole lot of funny things. But God took a prophet to show us that the self-same Eliezer of Genesis chapter 15 is now on the scene again. And now we know he's a steward, he's in charge of everything, and he calls him and he speaks to him. He says, Eliezer, I want you to put your hand under my thigh. He's still talking to him. He says, I pray thee. So it was not something that Abraham wanted to do out of his own. God had given him a commission because Abraham was talking to God. And trust me, brothers and sisters, friend, Eliezer knew that Abraham was talking to God. Abraham, Eliezer knew that the God of Abraham was answering prayers. But you know something? When you carry on to the end of Genesis 24, when he speaks, when, when he speaks and he thanks God for Rebecca coming over, when he addresses, when Eliezer addresses God, he says, the God of my master Abraham. Amen. So Eliezer knew that Abraham was talking to God and Ebri uh, Eliezer knew that God was answering Abraham's prayers. So when Abraham was told, you know what, I pray, Eliezer knew immediately that this was the plan and the will of God. We're carrying on with Genesis 24. When Abraham called Eliezer and told him, I want you to put your hand under my thigh, takes us back to Joseph. So, brothers and sisters, friend, Joseph was just like Eliezer. It was Eliezer of Damascus that was a servant in Abraham's house. And now we know Joseph was out in a foreign land. Out in a foreign land, staying true to the word of God. God had given him a plan. God had given him a purpose. You know what happened to him. How he grew up and he became second in charge of Pharaoh. Whatever he said went same with Eliezer of the Bible. The reason why I'm telling you this is because we'll find a little bit later, I'll show you a scripture verse, why I am bringing Joseph in the scene right now. So I want you to keep that in your subconscious, brothers and friends. So now, Abraham is telling Eliezer, Eliezer, I want you to put your hand under my thigh. So Abraham is now listening. Eliezer is now listening to what Abraham is saying. So according to the encyclopedias, the, the commentaries, Ebra's commentary says that when Abraham told Isaac to put his hand under his thigh, he meant to put his hand under his thigh. And by doing so, the subordinate is bringing himself under subjection by an oath. That whatever the master says after his hand is under the thigh, he is under obligation to fulfill. Amen. He is under obligation to fulfill. Brothers and sisters, friend, you need to keep that in mind. And now we find out that what 
after my brother Wise must greeting. Okay. There's it. Genesis chapter 47, reading verse 29. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. This is Jacob. That's now changed to Israel. And he called his son Joseph. That's a Joseph we just spoke about that has been faithful in the land of Pharaoh. He lived like a Christian. He's talking to the same Joseph. So Israel is talking to Joseph and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, father talking to son, put I pray thee thy hands under my ties. The very same words that Abraham used when he's speaking to his servant Eliezer. So, brother, sister, friend, I need you to understand God's word ties up one with the other and is not for us to try to make things happen the way we feel it to happen. Then we go along to Genesis 24, reading verse 3. And it says, And I will make thee swear... So, Eliezer was going to put his hand under the thigh of Abraham. And Abraham was not going to ask him. Abraham was going to make him swear. You know why? Because Abraham knew his servant. And he knew what his servant had to do. And I need to remind you, brother, sister, friend... That when God sent you a prophet to fulfill Revelation 10, 7, Malachi 4, 5, and 6, God told him what to do. Yes. It's not for you to question what he says. Yes. When he says, let there be a squirrel out there, and let there be one there, and let there be one in the tree, it was God Almighty that was speaking, not man. Yes. Trust me when I tell you, brothers and friends, when God gives a commission, he gives a commission unconditional. I will make thee, Eliezer, my servant Eliezer, when I send in the end time, whatever he says will be what I say. So, brothers and friends, and I will make you swear by the Lord God, the God of heaven. So now we know that Eliezer, the servant of the household, is going to be made to swear he never had the option. You know why? God has a plan and a purpose. When God chooses you to do something, there is nothing in this world, brothers and friends, that will stop it. Absolutely nothing that will stop it. God will have his way the way he needs it. So, brothers and friends, now we find out God called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees. He gave him a clear commission. Get thee out of thy father's house of thy kindred and of thy country. Okay? Not asking Abraham, will you come out? Get thee out. So now he's got a servant, Eliezer, that he was giving a commission. And let's see what the commission is all about. Genesis 21 verse, uh, Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2. Let's see what happened when God spoke to Abraham in Ur of the Chaldees. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of, thy fa- out of thy country, and from thy kindred. God is saying, Abraham, come out of that country, come out of your family, and from your father's house, come out of them, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. But brother, sister, friend, in Genesis chapter 24, verse 3, the commission now changes. He says, Eliezer, I want you to get a wife for my son Isaac. But it will not be the daughters of the Canaanites amongst whom I dwell. The commission is to the point. Eliezer, get Isaac a wife. She will not come out of Canaan. She will not come out of here. In other words, he will not be one of the locals. Can I just take this thing a little bit more home sensitive this morning? You as a message believer, when God has called you out into this end time message, what communication have you with darkness? 
Why do you young men and young sisters go out there in the world, go out to the denominations and get boyfriends and girlfriends? What is it, brother, sister, friend? God called you out. And when he called you out, he called you out lock, stock, and barrel. Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy kindred. Get thee out of thy father's house. Because he had a plan and purpose for you. But let's see what the same God does, brother, sister, friend. Let me take this a little bit clearer. On the day of Pentecost, when that Holy Ghost came down and the people in the upper room spoke in tongues, who were the people that were around them? People from all over the world. Am I right? What did they say? But you know, how do they speak in our language? They haven't left town. Brother, sister, friend, in Samaria, where Abraham was, there could have been people, there could have been families that came out of air of the Chaldees also a little there. But you know what? That spirit of the Canaanites rubbed onto those people. And that's what happened to anti-message believers that don't associate with the right people. They become lukewarm and they become starchy. So God has called out now and he's made that commission clear. Go and get me. But now the same God that told Abraham, Abraham, come out of your country, come out of your family, come out of your father's house. He's telling his servant Eliza, go back to my country. Yeah. Go back to my family. Yeah. That's God, brother, sister, friend. Yeah. When he wants to do, do things the way he wants it, it's not for you and I to question it. God is in control. He knows what he's doing. So anyway, let's see what Deuteronomy 7 verse 3 and 4 says. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall take unto thy son. Wow. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So when you get somebody from out there, they will make you serve another god. A God does not have to be an idol like that standing that you worship and bow to. Anything that takes you away from the truth of this word that you've had is a God, brother. Says, is an idol. It'll take you away. Trust me. And when it takes you away, it takes you to destruction. Remember Dan and Ephraim? The names are blotted out from under heaven. On the other side, the names were not mentioned. And the sixth seal, brother, sister, when you find out Dan and Ephraim is missing because they worship idols. Trust me when God knows why. So when, when Abraham spoke to Isaac and told Isaac, he doesn't want a wife. Uh, when he, when uh, Eliezer spoke to, when Abraham spoke to Eliezer, he doesn't want a, fire, a wife out of a Canaanite brother, sister friend. Why do you think he says that? Because the Canaanite population was a population that went perverts. Sodom and Gomorrah were Canaanite cities. You know what happened when the two angels went there. Yeah. Right? Lot could say, you know what? Take my daughters. They're pure. They're untouched. Leave these two men alone. That's the thinking of the city, brothers and sisters. And God destroyed them with fire and brimstone from heaven. That Sodom and Gomorrah spirit moved over to Los Angeles. The city of Los Angeles. What the prophet told us is going to slide beneath the sea one of these days. Brother Stephen, that spirit is now moved over to South Africa and to Cape Town. Cape Town has now become the gay capital of the world, the big city. That is what is happening. You think God is going to be good to these people? The God that I serve, he changes not, Brother Stephen. Amen. And I need you to understand that perversion, homosexuality, all moved with Sodom and Gomorrah came and that's the way it is and we need to understand that when God told Abraham to tell Eliezer to not get a wife from the Canaanites he knew what he was speaking about yes, Genesis 24 verse 4 says but thou shalt go unto my country this is a commission now this is a commission this is where I'm coming to the bloodline but thou shalt go unto my country and unto my kindred, and get a wife for my son Isaac. The commission is clear. I want a blood 
relation as a wife for my son. Amen. Wow. This is where we're getting to. I trust by the grace of God I'll be a little bit more slow as we're going through and that God will bless us. So, brothers and sisters, the commission was very clear. Abraham was 100 years old. He might have been a one that gets up in the morning, sits in the chair, gets back to bed whenever he feels like. Old age is crept in. So the commission was, go to my country, my family, and get a blood relation for a wife. Because he knew his family. He knew that she'll be pure. Brothers and friends, the commission was, Eliezer, go and get a blood relation. Period. In getting a blood relation, brothers and friends, there is a blood lineage. There is a DNA that got to match up the way it needs to be. You can't mess around with anybody's DNA. With that comes traits, identification, characteristics come all with that. So when God said, get one out of my family, he knew what it was. The commission was absolutely clear. And that is why I could tell you, once a Branham, always a Branham. The messenger said it, and I'm telling you just the same thing. Brothers and, friends. and I've got something written down I would like to read you. Your lineage, your lineage grants you access you, you my brother, you my sister, you have access where other people are not even allowed to enter. You know why? Because you are God's predestinated. You are God's foreknown. You are God's foreknowledge that he called you before the foundation of the world. Brother, sister, friend, and he died for you before the foundation of the world because you have been redeemed. Keep that thought in mind. I need to remind you that you are the royal seed of Abraham, my brother, my sister. I need to remind you where you come from. I need to remind you where you go for, go to. Where you come from, not everybody comes from there. Where you go to, not everybody goes there. You know why? Because you are a chosen seed of Abraham. You are the royal seed of Abraham, brother, sister, friend. Let me bring pedigree a little bit closer home. You get a breather that will try to breed the best racing horse that he can get. He will study these horses. He will look at the, the performance on the racetrack, what distance these horses do, what times they do. He will go back into the history of that horse for generations trying to find out who the mother, who the father, who the grandfather was, who the great-grandfather was. Trying to find a lineage to keep that lineage so he could get maximum financial benefits when he breeds that particular horse. But brother, sister, friend, after he finds that horse, he finds the quality, he says, well, if I can get a fall out of this one, I'm going to make a killing for it. But then that doesn't happen. He has to find a mare that has the qualities that he's looking for. He goes and he looks and he studies that and he gets that mare, brother Stephen, and then they mate and out comes a foal. I've seen pictures of these holes being born. When the mother stands and the foal falls, this guy is just weak and feeble. He can't do much because he's just a baby. In that condition, brother Stephen, he is a champion. In that condition, they know his blood lineage. We got the best of the, uh, the veterinarians uh, taking care of him. We got the best of the attendants that's taking care of them. Everybody's out there monitoring this guy. He can hardly walk, but he's a champion. He can hardly talk, but he's a champion. He can hardly run, but he's a champion. Why? The blood lineage is in line, brother, sister, friend. I don't care what anybody says. You are a champion. You are the royal seed of Abraham. Predestinated before the foundation of the world. Go get a wife for me, William Branham. So William Branham came and he spoke this word and he called it out. Why did you respond, brother, sister?
Brother, can you put that quotation for me on the board? I want you to listen to this quotation, Brother Sister Fred. As message believers, I want you to see what the messenger was saying. This was in 1959, in the message, A Time of Decision. And it was in the evening time, when he come to the well near the city. And it was about that time that Rebecca had to make a decision. Who? Eliezer came to the well. And it was that time that Rebecca had to make a decision. What time? The time that Eliezer came to the well. I believe the angel of the Lord beat him there about a half an hour. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Eliezer came uh -huh. to get a bride for Isaac. Yeah. Yeah, that's but the messenger is telling us, wow. When Eliezer got there, the angel of the Lord beat him there about half an hour. Yeah. Not beat him, beat him there about half an hour. Does it ring a bell, brother, sister, friend? So what did happen in that half an hour when the angel of the Lord came to Rebecca? He told Rebecca everything about Isaac. Amen. You know why? Come on, brother, sister, friend, I'm being passionate. Which of you young girls, if somebody comes out here and tells you to be wife to my son, you would say, I volunteer to go. Which of you young girls will do it? Which parent will allow the daughter to go? You understand? That angel of the Lord came down to uh, Rebecca at the well, brother, sister, friend, and told her everything about Isaac. Right, right. So when Eliezer came and said, Wow, my master is looking for a wife. My mind was made up already. If this was natural, if this was not supernatural, if it was not God in it, if it was not the angel of the Lord in it, a normal girl would have said, wow, yes, you gave me a earrings, you gave me these bracelets, but what about him? Is he short? Is he crippled? Is he dark-skinned? Does he have one eye? Does he have one hand? You understand what I'm saying? But the angel of the Lord told her, everything about Isaac. So when she had to make the decision, call her. She's of age. Let her make the right decision. Will you go, Rebecca? I will. Why, brothers and friend? Because that angel of the Lord beat Eliezer to the well. When you were sitting there out in the denominations, when you were listening to what was happening there, all these TV personalities, churches six, seven thousand strong, when somebody came to you and said, Serpent seed, do you know it was not an apple in the Garden of Eden? That angel of the Lord saw you about an half an hour Amen. before. Eliezer got on the scene. When that voice rang out, brother, wow, you recognize it. That's what the angel told me about. And I need to remind you, these things only happen because you have a blood relation. Amen. Brother, sister, friend, God knows what he's doing. I'm not taking too long. I pray by the grace of God. Can we just, can I get back onto my... So, brothers and sisters, look at that quote. Go home and read it again and again and again. I'm going to show you a couple of more quotations that you tie up with that. And I pray by the grace of God that God will open your understanding to the truth that has come down our way. Ephesians uh, chapter 2, reading verse 11 to 13, but I'm going to miss 11 and 12 out. Let's read 13. But now, in Christ, you who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You, my brother, you, my sister, have been drawn. Who are afar off 
in that half an hour of silence, He brought you in and you've been made nigh. You have been identified as a redeemed. Before the foundation of the world, He died for you. But now you've been reminded who you are. You were saved all the time. You were under that precious blood, but your understanding has been opened now. Why? Because the angel of the Lord beat Eliezer to the well about half an hour. This is the scripture we started with. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. You, my brother and sister, have reconciled to God because He died for you before the foundation of the world. Amen. That blood that made that atonement had your name written there, brother and sister, friend, Amen. when He shed His blood for you. And I pray by the grace of God that God will bless you. Amen. Looking at that quotation about a half an hour before time, in 1959, let's go to our next screen. Time of decision, 1959, Brother Branham says, so why did Rebecca make that sudden move? Why did she make that sudden move? Why did she go to the waters of life so quickly? Do you know why? The angel spoke to her. Confirmation came when Eliezer came. Why could the angel speak to her? Because she was a blood relation. That's why he spoke to her. That's why she acknowledged it. That's why she said, I do. Amen. Because she was a blood relation, brother Stephen. Amen. You are blood relations to the Almighty God. He died for you before the foundation of the world. He shed his precious blood for you, brother Stephen. When you are sick, you have been healed. Amen. Claim what is rightfully yours. When you've been lost and you're in sin, you claim what is rightfully yours, brother and sister friend, and God will bring you back under His precious blood. And that who, that's who the angel can speak to tonight is a blood relation. Can I say the same thing? That's who the angel can speak to this morning because you are a blood relation, brother and sister friend. By the blood we are born into the body of Christ. Rebecca was Isaac's own cousin by both fathers which made them blood relation. You are blood relation because Christ died for you, brother Stephen. Going back to... Okay, let me go to my next screen before I get back to the thought. Question and answer, 1964. Brother Branham says concerning the blood line. You can't cross the blood line, brother Stephen. Get over here amongst these people, showing that the bride of Christ, that's you, and Christ is, do you want an answer now? The answer is there. God sent a messenger, brothers and friends, because Rebecca and Isaac were blood relations. Amen. When Christ was speaking to John and was showing him the seven church ages, Every one of the seven church ages ended with him that have a is it singular or plural? You only can hear one word. You may have two years in the natural, but you're only going to hear it through one year. God is speaking, you're only going to hear one thing, you're only going to hear one voice. The reason why I'm saying this to him that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So God is speaking and he's talking singular, not ears. The reason why I've been talking about this, when Eliezer got to the well, he prayed that God must send somebody out here. When he asked for water to drink, she's going to give him water. And out of her own free will, she's going to feed the ten camels. Amen. And trust me, a camel can drink water. It can drink water. That poor girl had to let down that pitcher down the well, let it go down, pull it up, and get it. Before she emptied that one out there, that camel finished what was there, brother. 
they could drink over the 210 liter per camel. She did it at her own free will. So when this happened, Abraham told Eliezer when he gave him the commission, because Eliezer questioned him, what if she doesn't want to come? What if I don't find the right person? Abraham told Eliezer, the angel of the Lord will go before you. Amen. That's what Abraham told Eliezer. Go read Genesis 24. And Eliezer, take that very same quotation. At the end, when he sees what is happening according to his prayer request, he says, the Lord has sent his angel before me. And that's why it's happening the way it is. So Eliezer, after he'd done that, brother, sister, friend, he takes out a earring. I was curious about this. I went and looked into the dictionaries. You get a pair of earrings, earrings too. And earring is not like sheep. Sheep is singular, plural, it's sheep. Earring is one, two is earrings. Eliezer gave her a earring. The other one was waiting with Isaac, brother. She had to listen to her voice. He gave her a pair of bracelets so he could put it into her hands. So I thought maybe Scripture had omitted that. But when she went and Laban and the mother saw it, they saw the yeah, ring and the bracelets. So God word knows what he's doing. He took that singular in there when he spoke to Rebecca at the well. He brought it into the seventh church age at the end of the time and he said, him that hath a year, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And you have heard what Eliezer said, brother Stephen. You know what? You've listened with a year. God will bless you for that. Amen. So, brother sister friend, in this time, we find out while these things were happening, brothers and friends, God's word is very unique yet as a plan and a purpose. While in the Garden of Eden, you and I know what happened. You and I know that it was not eating an apple. You and I know exactly what happened, brothers and friends. But it took a prophet that comes on a scene that told us that the blood cell comes from the Father. So if the blood cell comes of the father, then there is no chance that Cain and Abel are twin brothers of the same father. Because Cain is called the one, you are of your father, the evil one. You understand? He was a liar from the beginning. You can understand, don't cross the bloodline. A true child of God will stay a child of God, will listen to the voice of the hour. Not listen here and then go out there and try to dig and find somewhere else. What are the churches preaching about? What are the denominations saying? Oh, yes, send those scripts out on your WhatsApp. What beautiful thing somebody is saying out there. Does he believe the word of the hour? Don't cross the bloodline. Jacob and Esau. Jacob was mommy's boy. Esau was a guy that labored for his father. Every father would love to have a son like Esau that could work for him, could cook for him, could do everything for him, could earn for him, go bring in food. But you know what, brothers and sisters, it was not the plan of God to be done that way. There was no plan for Esau and that, brothers and sisters. You think when, when uh, uh, Jacob de deceived his brother, it was a nice thing to do, carnal mind, no. But it was the plan of God, brothers and sisters. It was the plan of God. Nobody could hold it back. But you know what? His mother helped him, so let it be. While there was a Jesus, there was a Judas on the scene, brothers and friends. Judas was with the disciples. He could walk out with them. He could go everywhere. When the 70 were sent out, they went and prayed. People got healed. They cast out demons. They raised the dead. They came back bragging, Lord, we went and we spoke and we cast out demons. We raised the, we raised the dead. We healed the sick in your name. 
And what was his answer? What did Jesus Christ say? I saw Satan cast out from heaven like lightning. Brother, sister, friend. Rejoice because your name is in the Lamb's book of life. While there is a church, there is a church also. A church with a capital C, which is the bride of Christ. We will walk the face of this earth. We will experience the same thing that's happening around us. But you need to understand that you are the bride of Christ. You are covered by that precious blood, and nothing in this world is going to take you out, brothers and friends. Jesus died for you, and that is what is going to keep you, and I pray by the grace of God that you are the way it is. Let's go in a quick roundup. Rahab the harlot. She's done those funny kinds of things that we don't like to mention, don't like to talk about. We look at it in disgust. But when those spies came into the city, she did what was right. Something within her Amen. led her Amen. to do what is right, brothers and friends. And then she did. She covered them and she let them escape via the walls all through a rope, a scarlet thread. Brothers and friends, and God's servant told them, Rahab, bring your family and keep them in your house. Let that scarlet thread hang down there. The day we come to take over the city, you and your household will be saved. Amen. Brothers and sisters, friends, think about it. On the seventh day, God's children marched around the city for seven times, and that wall came down on its own. No bombs, no catapults, no bulldozers, that wall came down on its own, brother and sister. Why was Rahab's house saved? All because of that scarlet thread that was there. If God could save a prostitute woman that has done good to God's children, how much more would he do for you because he saved you and he died for you? You need to understand, brother and sister, friend, that that bloodline is running and you are covered by his precious blood. That is Rahab the harlot. Then we go back to that token that was applied when the children were leaving Egypt for the promised land. That was the last sign that was there, brothers and friends. And God's instruction was clear. You will apply the token over your doorposts and lentils. And when that death angel comes past, if he does not see that, he's going to take your, your firstborn away. Brothers and friends, it was the blood that saved the firstborn in the families that believed in God, Amen. that applied the token. Amen. I need you to understand that Pharaoh himself was the firstborn to his father. He never applied the token and he never died. All because God's word is clear. He says, I have raised Pharaoh up and I've hardened his heart so I could show my miracles among his people. God had a plan and he had a purpose for us. That token has been applied in this end time. And Brother Branham tells us, listen church, go home and read it again. Brother Branham tells us, the token in this end time is the life. The token in this end time is the life. A message believer that cannot lose the life has got to ask God, for that token in their lives, brother and sister, so they could start living the way God wants them to love. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Can we just go to the red part, the bottom there, in Jehovah Jireh? Brother Branham says, no matter how much circumcised how much covenant they had. The token had to be shown or the covenant was an annulled. The token, the brand says the token is a life. So if you can't live the life, the brand says, yeah, if the token had to be shown or the covenant will be annulled.
pray by the grace of God, certainly when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It is the blood, it is a lineage, my brother, my sister, that keeps you true through the way God wants you. Let's go back to something that's very, very famous, very, very interesting with the message believers. John was called up into heaven, and he saw all these beautiful things unfolding the way it was. And then when he saw the seven sealed book, and he saw his name sealed in there, John wept because he found nobody able to open that book. Scripture says he looked above there, he looked here, and he looked under the earth, and he found no one worthy to open that book. He wept. And in that condition, one of the elders said, John, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah is able to do that. Blessed is the friend. And when John turned around, what did he see? He saw a bleeding lamb. As it was slain since the foundation of the world. Bleeding lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. He took that book and he was ready to open it. What made him qualify, my brother, my sister? What made that bleeding lamb qualify? Brother Branham says that it was slain from the beginning of the foundation of the world. It was still bleeding when he came and took that seven seal book. You know why? Because his children are still sinning. And while we're in that sinful state, if we cannot live that life, brothers and friends, that lamb is bleeding. I need you to understand the lamb qualified to open that book because it was his blood, his DNA that sealed those seals. Nobody else could open it. Nobody qualified for it. Beside the lamb and the lamb alone. That is why he was worthy to open that book. Because it was sealed with his precious blood. I pray by the grace of God as anti-message believers that we accept that Jesus Christ died for us. We accept that the token has been applied in our lives. And we accept that we need to live the way he wants us to live. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Nothing else changes, my brother. Nothing else changes. And I pray by the grace of God that God will bless you and he will lead you and he will guide you. Amen. Just before we close, just give me a few more minutes, please. I don't normally like to ask for time. But Brother Bram talks about spiritual amnesia. When you lose your mind, you don't know, you can't identify who you are and things like that. The only way that one got a chance of coming back to normal is if we are taken to familiar places. And when you're taken to familiar places, then it clicks. So you that have spiritual amnesia, get back to the message of the hour. God's word will remind you who you are will bring you back to the word, will remind you that you are saved, will remind you that you are washed by his blood, to remind you that you are covered by his blood, to remind you that you are on the bloodline. And nothing else can pluck you from the hand of God, brother, sister, friend. I pray by the grace of God that God will bless you. And Rebecca, the super sign, 1962, Brother Branham says, And Rebecca, as soon as she heard of Isaac, there was something in her that pulled her straight to him. Though she hadn't seen him or nothing, she yet wanted to go by her own choice away from her mother and her brother. Because the angel of the Lord got there before Eliza, before she got that hearing, before she got the bracelet, and told her, there's a hell he is are coming. He's coming to take you to be a wife to Isaac. So, brother, sister, friend, we need to understand what God has in store for us. Amen. So, what happens when a believer walks outside the word of God? What happens when you, as a message believer, walk outside of what you've been taught in this glorious word? You are walking outside out under the covering of the blood.
That's what you're doing, brother Stephen. And I need to understand, you need to understand that when you come out from under the covering of the blood, the powers and principalities of this world can have its free reign with you. But when you are covered by his precious blood, the devil can do you no harm. Doesn't matter what he wants to try and what he wants to do. In closing, I'll just put this on the screen. I trust by the grace of God it'll make some sense to you. Go read Genesis chapter 24, brother Stephen. Read the old chapter. Verse 18 says, And she said, Drink, this is Rebecca, Drink, my Lord. She's talking to Eliezer. Drink, my Lord. And she answered, And let down a pitcher upon her hands, And gave him to drink. And in, in Genesis 24, Eliezer is referred to as a servant 13 times. He's referred to as a man nine times. But one time, Rebecca recognized who she was and said, My Lord. God bless you, Brother Anas. Amen. Amen. We really appreciate the Lord that He could send us a wonderful message that uh, Eliezer could find a place and purpose. And that's what we believe today. Let's stand upon our feet. <clears throat> you know what the prophet one time said, Lord, show me my ministry. Show me, Lord, um, why is all these things happening to me? Where is my place in this, this economy of God? You know how God took him to that very scripture where he showed him his Eliezer going to get a bride for Isaac. And I believe exactly uh, there's a bloodline. I believe by the grace of God that God has done something wonderful in every life. I believe that without God, you can do nothing. Without Him, you cannot achieve anything. You know, it's like that baby that gets born into the family. He just looks up and he sees his mother, his father, and, and he's there. He had no design of his own. He had no desire of his own. But the desire came from the expression of the father. Therefore, he says, you were all in the mind of God before the foundation of this world. And you are here today because God had a, a desire to express children. He had seed inside of him, a word seed. And he fulfilled that very purpose in, in us being here today. And that's why the prophet says, we being here give him reason to exist. Amen. If you were not here today, you know, there would, no be, there would not be any reason. But God needed to be a healer. He needed to be a savior. He needed to be uh, somebody that could take care. He needed to be fixer of broken hearts. He needed the one that could put things together which no other man could. That's why many of us, we go through things and we get disappointed in life. We get rejected. We get uh, many things happen to us. And you look at those things and you'd wonder, my, is life worth living for? But when Jesus comes on the scene... You can say, my life is worth living because he lives. My life has found a purpose because he came into my life. Before Jesus came into my life, I had no purpose. I was running up and down looking for things of the world. But when he came, he gave my life such a purpose that it doesn't matter what happens, it doesn't matter what the enemy brings, the purpose stays true. And therefore we can believe today that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we appreciate thy word this morning. That we can hear, O oh Father, how Eliezer went looking for a wife for Isaac. And Lord, how many times your prophet picked up that same scriptures and preached sermon upon sermon upon sermon. And Lord, he didn't just preach it, O oh Father God, because he had nothing to say. He preached it by great inspiration, by thy spirit leading him. And Lord, every sermon he preached, O oh Father, was for people, was for a bride, a woman, O oh Father God, a great woman as the Bible would call her. And that woman could hear those sermons preached and she could lift her hand and say, that's me. This man has come and identified me and I am ready to follow this message, this word revealed to me. And Father, I pray for everyone in this building this morning that you will give them grace and understanding, 
that that bloodline will be identified, O God, and that we will take up our position, O Father, and that we will stand, O Father, as that great woman that has been called by a great name, and that she has been washed by the blood, and she's carrying that blood tag upon her life. Father, I pray that you will bless your people with every undertaking. Every need this morning is known unto thee. I pray that thy word will have an effect in every life. That we will stand and know, Lord God, that there is a reason and a purpose. The word came our way, called us by name. As John wept, O oh, Father God, and he knew if no one takes that book, he is lost. And so, Lord God, we were all lost in this end time. But you came, O oh Father, and you opened that book again. And you showed us our names written in that Lamb's book of life. And we are quickly ran to our position, O oh Father. We could, re we could react to that word because there's a blood relationship, O oh God. And we thank you for that seed that's placed in every life today. We thank you for that word seed in every life. Because we know if that seed is not there today, God, we can preach the word for a million years. No life can come to that. But if the seed is there this morning, Lord, we know life can come. Because the life was placed there by thy spoken word before a foundation of this world. Lord, I pray that you will bless your people. I pray that you will bless our brother ministering the word. Bless his family, Lord. Bless his church back in PE, Lord. May you continue to use them and strengthen them, O oh Father. May that word ever be true in their lives. May it be a fountain, O oh Father God, running that can, that can refresh your people. Lord, we commit ourselves to thee, asking thy blessings upon every life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You appreciate the Lord. Surely it's wonderful just to sit and drink in words of life, and we really appreciate. Amen. Let's sing that little song as the musicians come. He touched me. Number 227, I think, he touched me. You know, when Jesus touched you, you are different. It's about the touch of the master's hand. He changes circumstances. He can change anything by just bringing him into your life. By him being the, the center of your life, everything becomes subject to his great control. Because that's what you want. You can't control your own life. You don't know when is your last day. You don't know, you know what's going to happen tomorrow. We really, in fact, know nothing. If you think you know something, you are deceived. The only thing we know is that God is still on the throne. That he is still in control. That my life is in his hands. Therefore I know when he touched me, he changes me. When he touched my situation, it changes. When he touches everything, you know, it is, it, is, it is a principle. That if he can just touch me, all things are under control. Amen. Let's sing it to the glory of God. Amen. I was shared. Cold by a heavy burden Only the Lord of guilt and shame Touch me and now I am no longer the same. Oh, he, he touched me. me. my soul oh, there is something that happened and now I know he touched me I met this blessed Savior. Oh, 
since I met this blessed Savior. Oh, since He cleansed and made me whole. Satan took her and he was busy destroying her. But something happened. She heard a report. She heard the word of God. And she believed it. And her whole life has changed from that very moment. The prophet says she didn't want to do those things. She never wanted, but she was forced into it. Her parents placed, it in, placed her into it. You know, many things can happen. But when God came, that was me and you. We were all in different situations, but when He touched me, my life was never the same. He made me whole. He gave me purpose and He gave me reason. And I appreciate Him today for that wonderful grace. You know, God can do anything. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter what your parents have done. Your grandparents, your lineage, you get a new lineage. You get a new blood tag. You, you are from a different family. And your father is God. Amen. It makes such a brief, big, big difference. Amen. Let's sing that song, When I See the Blood, I Will Pass Over You. That's the principle. When judgment strikes, God can never judge you. This word is already busy judging you. Every time you hear the word, it judges you. It changes you. It corrects you. So when you go there, you can never be judged again. Because the word has done its work inside of you. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. Our Redeemer died on the cross and He died for the sinner, paid all His doom and spread all your soul in the blood of the Lamb and our past will pass over you. And when I, when I, when I see the blood, see the blood, when I, when I see the blood, when I, when I, I see the blood, then I will pass 
sin and all he has promised and that will he do wash in wash in that fire and that's all and for sin and I'll pass will pass over you Receive it just with you and hide it, hide in the sin, faith, sin, cleansing blood, and I'll pass, will pass over you. that can take that blood from off your life nothing can remove it nothing can take it away when you receive the Holy Ghost you are sealed until the day of your redemption and we believe God we thank him for that and we appreciate him this day amen I'm gonna ask brother Emmanuel to come and close for us in the word of prayer if you have a need you can raise your hand to the Lord and say Lord as this service is closed in your mighty name today Remember me. Amen. Just bow our heads and pray. Our gracious and most loving Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we are indeed a grateful people this afternoon. Lord Jesus, Father, to hear the words that we have been hearing this morning. Lord Jesus, Father, it makes our hearts, Father Jehovah, to be revived. Lord Jesus, Father, to know that, Lord, when we were not yet there, Father, you already had a plan, Father, over how to get us to you. And Father Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, as we were hearing, Father Jehovah, this wonderful story, dear God, even Father Jehovah, that relates to us, Father, and you, dear God, Jehovah, Father, before you sent your messenger, Malachi 4, Father, Revelation 10, 7, Lord Jesus, Father, there was already something within us that Lord God Almighty, Father, was waiting, even Father Jehovah, to be hearing those things that Eliezer would say. And when we heard them, Father Jehovah, that brought us, even Father Jehovah, to the quickening, Lord, it brought 
brought us away father jehovah from where we were even father to come into your presence that we can be able father jehovah to be benefits even father of your blessings and your promises and father jehovah this morning we are so thankful dear god even for this word father jehovah that is enlightening us oh god even that is lifting us up into a higher place where we can be able dear god jehovah father even to know even much more clearly father jehovah what we are in this hour and lord god almighty father we are so grateful this morning father and your children dear god i believe they are all grateful father even father even for the word that has been brought forth and i pray that lord may it have full effect in our lives father jehovah those that were still father jehovah wandering in amnesia dear god even father jehovah may they come out even father jehovah after lord god almighty your word has spoken even father jehovah so directly dear god we want to thank you father for the meanings of the word your servant father brother samuel dear god even father even for taking himself aside lord almighty god jehovah father we pray that may you continue to strengthen him lord may you bless him bless his ministry bless his church dear god and his family dear father as he continues even father jehovah to walk in this path lord even i pray that lord may your unction even father be always upon him dear god even father jehovah wherever he has to stand even father jehovah to encourage your bride even lord god almighty even lord want to pray even lord god almighty father even lord for your dear children in this place those that are raising their hands lord even with the needs and the desires under their hearts oh god jehovah father you're more than able father to see every need even and i pray dear god this afternoon that lord jehovah father as they stand in your presence oh god jehovah father may you make a way and lord god almighty may the holy spirit take father not of every need and lord god almighty father to guide even father jehovah even your angels father jehovah to supply every need and i pray this morning dear god may you bless us all together father as we face the new week lord almighty god father I want to pray that lord may the same angels of god may go with us father over through the week father to fight our battles dear god knowing we have blood relations with you father jehovah you care for us and lord god almighty father we will be expecting to have a wonderful time in your presence once again and lord god almighty father we pray that may you bless us all together even lord god almighty father as we take our, our journeys to our different homes we pray that lord may you guide us safely until we come back at your feet once again we love you and appreciate you this morning we give you praise we give you glory and honor in the precious name of jesus christ we want to pray this afternoon amen and amen Amen. You may take your seats. <clears throat> we really appreciate the Lord. I want to thank our brother Sammy for coming once again and ask him to take our greetings back home and greet the, the church in Port Elizabeth and take our blessings with you, brother. Tell them we appreciate them and thanking them for allowing you to come and visit us and uh, coming with your family. May God bless you, sister. And the children, we really appreciate you coming with our brother. And uh, we appreciate the work our brother is doing in Port Elizabeth in the assembly there. And may he continue to be used and strengthened by the Lord. Is our prayer and desire for them. Amen. Please remember on uh, this coming Saturday, if the Lord should tarry, we'll have a youth day here at the church. On the grounds here. It will start at 9 o'clock. I need just some confirmation of who will be coming. If you can give your names to Brother Emmanuel to just put together a, a attendance list that we can know who to prepare for. So this coming Saturday is a youth day. So we would like to invite and have all our youth here to spend a day of fellowship and discuss uh, matters that is important to youth. Amen. Then Brother Oswald would be coming the end of the month for another eye operation. We know what happened to him last time, how he injured his eye. And they had the first operation, so he must come now for the follow-up operation. So we want to pray for our brother, that all will be well as he would travel here, journey here to South Africa for the operation, that um, God will just make a way for him, that uh, the doctors will be ready and that his eye will be healed up to a point that he will be able to undertake this next operation. We just need to remember our brother in prayer. He is a faithful soldier of the cross and he needs our support in this time. And I believe that by God's grace, uh, all will be well. Tuesday, brother's prayer meeting and Wednesday, midweek tape service at the church. We are all invited to come and partake what the Lord has done for us. 
Isn't it wonderful to be a child of God? It is absolutely wonderful. It's a privilege and there's no better place to be than to stand under the wings of the Almighty God that He will be able to bless us and protect us. May God keep you, may He bless you and may He provide all your needs. We know that this week will be full of challenges but we know God has got an escape out of every one of them. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Uh, but we know those challenges are there to build our character, to form us, to make us into that image that the Lord has got planned for us. Nothing that happens to us is by chance, but our footsteps are foreordained of the Lord. So may God bless you and may He keep you. Amen. The deacons can come. You are dismissed. Amen. <laughs>